Second review. What do I pick? Guillotine, and welcome to the Gaming Guillotine. Today up on the Lunette, we're going to try out one of my favorite video games of all time. I'm a little scared to be putting this in here. I also have a few too many copies. Final Fantasy X. Now you might be thinking, why are you putting a game on the chopping block that you have a love for? Well, to really get at the issue, the heart of the thing that I want to talk about, let me go back a little bit. You see, when this beauty came out in 2002, I was still in my gaming adolescence. That's not to say I didn't play a lot of games. Up until about this game, I didn't get thoroughly invested in them. It was this game that made me start to experience games as more than just something played simply for fun to mindlessly lose yourself in. The story and the characters are more than just pixels on the screen, and this finally resonated with me. I became absorbed in the world. This game, in part, made me the gamer I am today for having an appreciation for the medium as an art form. I'm gonna stop that rant right there because it's starting to sound a little bit egocentric? Egotistic? I can't think of the word right now. So imagine my unbridled glee when it was announced that this game was getting cross-platform saving on an HD remastering with trophies and content I was a very happy gamer. Now you're probably wondering to yourself, why would you be putting a game on the chopping block that you have a love for? It's you, you just went into a stupidly long rant about how much you love this game. Well, yes, my nostalgia goggles were a bit too obscuring when I first started playing this remake. But back to what I was saying before. To drastically paraphrase, I started to gain an understanding of what made games good, how their mechanics came together with story, music, and so many other things. It set me down a critical, analytic path. So when I started the HD remastering of Final Fantasy X, for the first time, I wasn't quite expecting how I'd fall in love with it all over again, nostalgia goggles not pending. However, I also over time developed an overwhelming, seething, hatred for the minigames that share this disc. I speak in particular of the Blitzball game, the Chocobo Racing minigame, and Dodging Lightning Bolts on the Thunder Plains, which granted may not necessarily be a minigame, but my hatred escalates for the latter two exponentially. Now, my hatred is not unfounded, and from a person that spent over 400 hours total between the original and the remastering, I feel I have every right to critique them, Square Enix. Those are what's on the chopping block today. Not the actual game itself, the mini-games. These now! So with that in mind, let's start with Blitzball. To be honest, I don't know too many sports games that manage to implement RPG statistics and a mix of real-time and turn-based elements. Actually, I don't know too many sports games in general. To its credit, Blitzball is probably one of the better mini-games. It's put together well enough to allow a certain degree of strategy, and there's depth in the moves that you can acquire, players you can recruit, and the prizes that you can win can lead to the ultimate weapon for one of the characters. However, the strategy element dissolves with the addition of two things, random chance and level unbalancing. Overleveling is just kind of a usual thing in RPGs, but it makes most of the challenge removable. However, the random chance is a much bigger salt in my wound that could have been dealt with. You see, the statistics of your players determine the combat-like segments where players encounter each other to either advance down the field, throw passes, shoot goals, or try to steal the ball from the other team. However... The numbers, they don't freaking matter! Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but let me explain. One of the things regarding these numbers is that they have a chance of fluctuating. I don't recall the exact amount, but let's just say the fluctuations can really be infuriating and really unstable. The worst part is the first game is nearly impossible if you don't get an optional move called the Jacked Shot, which comes from one brief segment that only appears once, and if you don't know it's coming, then guess what? No Jacked Shot! On top of that, your starting team is inferior stat-wise to all the other players, so you do not have good chances. For someone that likes winning even in optional mini-games that don't advance the story at all, this is really something that gets under my skin. However, all these complaints are minor overall, and it was a nice little time waster once you boost your player stats to become fair, and then boost it even further so that you don't have to think about anything. Then if you want one of the best items, you have to grind until you are totally overleveled, and then it's a near mindless grind. But I can't help but feel it could have been more. By eliminating random chance for assorted stats and putting more emphasis on learnable moves, you could have added another layer of depth to how you enter the game, memorizing player moves and countering those with other moves on specific players with certain stats. But alas, I'm doing that thing where I dwell too much on something. Let's move on. Chocobo Racing. It starts out easy enough. 
go down a straight path and dodge balls in a certain amount of time. Wait, why? Okay, I didn't know. Okay, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I, why are you turning that way? Why? Uh... Apparently, the chocobo likes to undo some of the turns you make. Next level. Now there are birds that target you and increase your timer. And dodgeballs. And your chocobo still can't take orders. Like Digital Homicide can't take criticism. The final level is another thing you need to beat in order to get another ultimate weapon, so you know there will be an obscene requirement. You're now no longer on a straight course, but it still has invisible walls. And on top of all the other previous challenge added by obstacles, you get an AI opponent and balloons that reduce your time on the clock. To get the ultimate weapon piece, you need to get enough balloons and beat the AI opponent to get a time of zero. A time of zero? Square Enix, can I just say and why would you decide that this thing was a good idea? Oh, and those birds I mentioned? Well, you have to learn their spawn points because if you get too close, auto hit and time penalty. Seriously, if you get too close, you cannot react and all agency from your decisions is completely removed. Oh, and that coincides nicely with the next fact. Those balloons are random spawning and your opponent is also going for them. You have to get at least four on the opening stretch and if they spawned wrong, then your opponent will take them and you might as well put the control down and let your bird autopilot to every area of the course in the direction you want because the controls are only loose and just run or define command to the start of the game until you're finished your course! They probably didn't think it important to put a little bit more thought into an entirely optional side minigame, but nevertheless, let's look at some of the ways they could have fixed this mess. 1. Mid-race restart option. 2. Bird doesn't change direction, or it is at least less so the more times you do the previous levels. 3. Visibly defined course boundaries. Seriously, these are all well-established things from a racing genre that has been around a lot longer than Final Fantasy X. It's been around since the actual first Final Fantasy. What is wrong with you, Square Enix? I know you don't do a lot of racing games, but what is wrong with you? Lastly, 4. The targeting birds have to spawn a minimum distance from the actual player. All these factors just deliver on a minigame that is punishing rather than difficult. So yeah, screw this minigame. The game has one redeeming factor. When I was younger, playing this on my PS2, I gave my friend $10 to beat it for me. He swore like a little leprechaun sailor. One of the best wastes of money I ever spent in ever since this game has been affectionately named those <laughs> Birds 10. This last bit is less a minigame, more just a little side activity that you can get rewards for engaging in. But if you do decide to engage in it, it is an absolute act of attrition. This is yet another thing that unlocks another, possibly yet the most difficult to earn, weapon piece. Two words bring nightmares to any hardcore fan of Final Fantasy X. Lightning dodging. <laughs> Mechanically, it's probably the simplest. Go to the Thunder Plains in Final Fantasy X, and when the screen flashes white, quickly press X to dodge a lightning bolt within the time frame given. Do it 200 times for your reward, Square Enix. Up yours! I did this myself, but I don't exaggerate when I say this took me four days to do. Not total time, but after I initially started this quest, I wasn't complete until four days later, and that was after experimentation and several failures. You see, if you can consistently dodge, then you can get it in about 30 minutes. However, I'm the type of person that likes knowing the status, so I count, but when I count it becomes a distraction and my attention span has trouble lasting that long, so on any high alertness exercise in general. Eventually I found that dodging 10 bolts and taking a break to ease tension was the best method. Overall challenging, but doable under normal conditions. Here's the problem, and I speak with no exaggeration when I say it's broken. It's not broken, it's broken. You see, when this was made for the PS2, lag between display and system was rare. With modern games, it's relatively commonplace. Look at any modern rhythm game made for an HD display and you'll find a tool to compensate for lag. But guess what? Because of this lag, the time frame now demands reaction time that is considered unreasonable even by the twitchy standard for seasoned gaming veterans. Seriously, this is live footage of me trying this game. I ultimately discovered that the Vita version didn't have this lag, so I dusted off my Vita and used the cross-save option. Seriously, this is the last thing I used my Vita on in over two years. That is the only reason I was able to complete this. I know this isn't a rhythm game, but it kind of baffles me that the display lag of modern entertainment systems wasn't taken into account at Square Enix. Square, if anyone there is listening, please patch this on the PS3 or 4 versions. It will save the sanity of many fans trying to win this weapon. At least it wasn't an issue on the PC version I played, but that could just be because of my high-end monitor. I, 
I can't ignore it. When a developer ignores even the smallest detail, the overall experience is detracted from and I have to send Square Enix a message. They, they can't ignore small pieces that are going to frustrate players. I don't... I don't wanna... You know, I got really flustered before, but I, in all honesty, there's too much for me to recommend in this game, and I can't put it in there, so. Those are my thoughts on Final Fantasy X. It's not going in. What about Final Fantasy X 2? What about it? Thanks for watching my video. I'm having a lot of fun making these things and uh, destroying games. Uh, if you have any tips on how to uh, improve my channel or want to see a game that uh, I might throw in the future, uh, go ahead and leave a comment. Uh, subscribing and liking is going to help me out a lot, especially if I want to try and get this thing off the ground. And uh, until the next execution, God bless all of you.